Today I'm going to paint a strange little miniature for a pride challenge. So I'm a member of the Goober Town Hobbies Discord community, which is a pretty fantastic community centered around mini painting that's full of chill and welcoming folks. It's a great place to chat about all my different hobbies, including mini painting, as many of the members are passionate multi-hobbyists like me who just love the process of making things. Throughout the year, the community hosts casual mini painting challenges with no prize or competition involved, just a fun way to challenge yourself on a personal level. June marks the second annual Pride Challenge, which has a simple theme. Paint a mini that describes what pride means to you. For these casual challenges, a lot of folks will either choose something from their pile of unpainted models or 3D print a new model for the challenge. I don't have a 3D printer, nor do I have a huge pile of unpainted minis to choose from. Having as many hobbies as I do means I don't really accumulate large quantities of any one thing for any one hobby. Over the years, I've accumulated a few bags of leftover bits from a few different boxes that I've owned previously or that friends have given to me, and I keep these on hand in case they become useful for kit bash projects. Kit bashing is a term that's used when you grab pieces from commercial model kits to make something new with them, or to add onto existing models or dioramas or things like that. Most of my bits bags are pretty small and they don't have a lot of variety. The one exception is this Tyranid Battle Force box from the early 2000s. This was gifted to my hobby pile by my partner, who used to play Tyranid, and while many of the larger models are already painted and I won't be repainting them, I was able to scour a bunch of unpainted or primed gene stealers out of this box, as well as a huge bag of random unpainted bits. Since the plastic from this Tyranid box is currently the only major source of spare minis that I have, it became the weird choice of inspiration for my Pride mini from last year. This little Tyranid gene stealer, who has separated from the swarm to celebrate its uniqueness. At the time, I chose to paint it in the colors of the gender queer flag, since Tyranids don't present as a particular gender. Its flag consists of an old sprue beam and a banner flag from some old high elf sprues that were gifted to me. In the spirit of what pride might mean to me, I'd like to think that even these vicious, relentless, swarming creatures might have something inside them that longs to get out, and if they wanted to, they would be welcomed in the community and be allowed to march in a parade with anyone else who chooses to. So this year I wanted to paint something similar, but up my game a little bit and employ some of the painting techniques that I've improved on in the past year. Since I basically still only have these limited bags of bits, I decided to do the same thing and use some more Tyranid model parts, and use some of my additional bits for props if needed. In the end, I chose this fun little person, who I'm pretty sure is also a gene stealer, but with some fun knifey weapons, and I sorted through the bits to find these two little friends to join the parade, who apparently are called Rippers. Adorable! I found a nice rectangular base from my pile of old bases and got to work scraping off some mold lines and leftover sprue bits. I wasn't too particular with this as most of them won't show up very well in the end. And then it's time to pull out the old plastic glue and glue the minis to the base. So here we have a short scene jump because I forgot to hit record on a couple of bits, sorry about that. So let's catch up while I paint some flat ivory white on the model. Since you've last seen me, I've done a nice simple zenithal prime on the mini, which is a far cry better than the prime job you saw in my last mini painting video, so good for me. You'll also see that I added a flagpole and a flag. These bits are actually from the same high elf sprues that I used to make last year's pride mini flag. But this time I used an old spear for the pole, hacking off the arm that held the spear as well as the crossbeam near the top. Then I grabbed one of the elf's cloaks and glued it to the pole to make the flag. Once the model was primed, I grabbed a quick photo of it and prepared a concept in Clip Studio Paint. I knew I wanted the main gene stealer to be accented in a rainbow of colors, and I decided I would make the rippers outfitted with the colors of the pansexual and bisexual flags. 
Tyranid gene stealers can breed with any gender or species, so it seems to loosely fit with the theme. Much like my first mini, these folks decided to form their own little swarm and parade with their friend amongst the community and not be evil anymore, which is pretty cool. I have no idea if that's actually viable, I'm guessing probably not, but it's a wholesome feel-good story and that's what I'm going with. So back to this paint job. This ivory white base color is being laid down on most of the mini because the Gene Stealer and Rippers will be white for their base color and also because the white paint is a perfect base for laying down all of the bright colors that this trio will be sporting. Once the ivory white is all laid down in two thin layers, I begin to add splashes of hot pink to the weird little Tyranid crevices as the accent. Since most of the Games Workshop paint jobs I've seen for Tyranids seem to consist of white with red in these crevices, I thought it would be a fun spin on that. This part was pretty finicky, since all these crevices are pretty tiny. I use a fine tip brush and just take it slow. If I mess up a brush stroke here and there, I just go back in with the ivory and clean up the edge for a nice clean look. I also add hot pink to the knifey weapons and the mouths of the Gene Stealer and the Rippers. Once those flat colors are laid down, it's time to get ready to paint the rainbow. I grab my best and brightest from my pithy selection of paints and I get ready to roll. I started with yellow, since yellow is the absolute worst color to paint in terms of pigmentation. If you ever need to paint it over a darker color, you'll need a whole lot of layers to get it even close to opaque enough to cover the darker color. So painting it first on the white background is ideal. Even then, it took me three coats to get decent yellow coverage. Oh yellow, why you gotta be yellow? After the yellow's all done, I work on the remaining warm colors, starting with a couple of coats of bright orange, then a bright crimson red. Painting the spiny back of the Gene Stealer was pretty tricky with the other elements sometimes getting in the way, and painting the pride flag was a lesson in painting delicately, since that heavy cloak flag on the skinny polearm flagpole was not my smartest decision in sturdy kit bashing. But in the end I made it work, and only broke it off the base once, so I'll call that a win. Once the warm colors of yellow, orange, and red are all laid down, I move on to a bright emerald green, followed by a deep blue and good old Vallejo purple for the cool color sections. I also use the deep blue and Vallejo purple on the rippers and return to that stunning hot pink for the pink parts in both rippers flag colors. Once the rainbow was done, I went back to the flag to finish it up. I wanted to paint the progress variation of the pride flag that was designed by Daniel Kassar in 2018. This variation adds a chevron to the existing pride rainbow design that features additional colors that welcome trans communities, people of color, and those living with HIV and AIDS into the fold. The chevron itself has symbolism as well. It points to the right to indicate progress, but sits on the left of the flag to indicate that much progress still needs to be made. And now the base colors are all completed, and as usual, that was probably the longest part of the process. Now it's time to lay down some depth with some wash. I start with a thin wash of light tan Rakeland flesh shade on the ivory white sections of the model. And once that's dry, I add a wash of dark brown Agrax earth shade to all of the brightly colored areas. If I had spent a little more time on this step, I probably would have used some washes that are specifically designed for yellow, blue, and green, but for my purposes, the Agrax did its job just fine and really added some nice cohesiveness to the colors. Once the wash has dried completely, I go back in with the ivory white and a fine detail brush to do some dry highlight areas on some of the body. Usually I'll use a dry brush for this and pull in the detail brush only for the finer bits of the model, but aside from the flagpole, this mini is a bit fragile in general. The Gene Stealer is only holding on to that base with one toe, so I really didn't want to be smacking it with a dry brush too much. And I also really wanted the highlight details to be bright and crisp and not to accidentally hit the bright parts of the model with white paint. I made that mistake with last year's Pride model, and I really wanted to make this one pop. Once I finish the ivory highlights, I go back in with each of the bright colors one by one, and go through that same process of brightening up the raised areas to really make the colors pop again. I also take the time to add some finer details to the flagpole during this step. 
Now the model itself is basically done, and it needs some attention given to that base to hide this weird base on base situation I found myself in. As I typically do with my minis these days, the first thing I did was cover the base in watered down craft glue and douse the base with coarse craft sand. This sand is great for balancing out those base shapes a little bit. You can still see them underneath, but I'm okay with that. I didn't fuss too much with making them completely hidden. This sand will also give me a great surface for creating a grassy texture that I hope to somewhat match to last year's mini. First, I lay down a big wash of Agrax Earthshade and let that dry. Then I apply a dry brush mix of bright grassy green and light dirt brown. I tried to keep the greens and browns similar to last year's mini, but as a bit of an additional flourish, I decided to add a little bit of pink floral accent to the grass to match the bright pink that's used on the models and now on the rim, which is the finishing touch to this model before varnishing it and sending it out for a photo shoot. And with that, this year's Pride Tyranid is complete. I'll be the first to say that the theming is a little absurd and silly, and while I'm sure this model will give some folks a giggle, and I hope it does, the intent isn't to poke fun at the base subject matter, of course. It's just to provide a cheerful Pride-themed narrative while having some fun with some spare miniatures I had on hand. On a personal note, LGBTQ rights mean a lot to me, and it's enjoyable to find creative ways to incorporate that into my hobby work when I'm able to. I'm a cisgender heterosexual female, but I've spent most of my life exploring identity and what it might mean to me, and will probably continue to do so. Over the years, I've had the pleasure of celebrating close friends who have come out as LGBTQ, and I've done my best to be a strong ally for them. That said, I'm not flawless, and I'm always looking for ways to do better. And to return to the theme of the day, I, I think that's what pride means to me. Supporting my LGBTQ friends and family, and always striving to be a better, more supportive ally of the larger LGBTQ community and the local spaces that support it. If you want to be a better ally, there are a lot of ways to do so. One of the easiest shows of support you can do is add your pronouns to your social media profile and your email signature and wherever else you might sign your name. Make an effort to follow your local LGBTQ and BIPOC organizations, listen to what they have to say and find out what you can do to help. Speak up in your social circles. If you see or hear someone being hateful, don't stay silent. If you, like me, are a cisgender heterosexual person, you are in a specific place of privilege, and you can use that to protect our allies. And on the other side of the coin, don't make the conversation all about you. Make an effort instead to amplify the voices of LGBTQ and BIPOC individuals over your own whenever you're able to do so. As an ally, our job first and foremost is to listen and learn and let those with lived experience speak before we do. And with that, I'm going to follow my own advice and get off my soapbox. However, I'm going to leave some resources in the description below if you'd wish to learn more for yourself and research using appropriate terminology and respectful language surrounding the LGBTQ community. This is a topic close to my own heart, and much like these little Tyranid pals who decided to go against the grain to march with their friends and support each other, I will continue to make the effort to be the best ally I can to my friends and my family this month and every month of the year. Happy Pride everyone, I hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!